Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the KevTech Fi Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at inter-VLAN routing operation. We'll be discussing what is inter-VLAN routing, legacy inter-VLAN routing, router on a stick, inter-VLAN routing on a layer 3 switch. This episode is part of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. I'm Kevin here at KevTechify. Let's get this adventure started. If we look at a layer two switch, a layer two switch, we can create VLANs. Each port, each group of devices on a switch could be placed into their own virtual LAN. The idea here is to segment that traffic using 802.1Q frame tagging, where we insert a little piece of information, 12 bits long, into the header field to identify which VLAN it belongs to. That way when the switch gets it, it can properly say, okay, it belongs to a certain VLAN. We're only going to put that piece of information on, on that VLAN and none of the other VLANs are going to, going to get that information. Now, this is done for security reasons. This is done for optimization re reasons to separate your traffic out. A number of different reasons why we do, why we have VLANs. The issue with the VLANs is they do not communicate with each other. If you are in a certain VLAN, take VLAN 10 for example. If you have two devices in VLAN 10, those can communicate with each other. But if you have a device in one VLAN and a different VLAN, say you have one computer in VLAN 10, another computer in VLAN 20, those will not communicate if you just have a switch. We have to bring in a layer three device in order to do routing to get from one VLAN to another VLAN and that's what we're looking at here for inner VLAN routing. For us to do that routing we have to introduce a layer 3 device that does some sort of routing service on that. That's what we're, that's what we're talking about is this inter VLAN routing routing from one VLAN to another VLAN. We have three options for inter VLAN routing. One is legacy inter VLAN routing, second one is router on a stick, and then the third one is using a layer three switch with switch virtual interfaces. Legacy inner VLAN routing is legacy. It's old, it's slow, it's not efficient. It, it, it's pretty costly when you start looking at it in terms of physical equipment. In this diagram here, we have a VLAN 10 and a VLAN 20. We have PC1 and VLAN 10, we have PC two in VLAN 20. They're both connected into a switch. This switch has the VLANs created on them. Fast Ethernet 1 and Fast Ethernet 11 on our switch, they are in VLAN 10. Then over here we have Fast Ethernet 12 and 24. Those are in VLAN 20. That makes this all in the same VLAN. That makes all, these two ports and PC1 in the same VLAN. Now, in order for these two to communicate, the, the left side with the right side, we have to have a layer three device in there. Every Right now, all our communication is done in layer two, but because we have those layer three IP addresses, we have to introduce a layer three routing option. And that's what we have right here. Up here is R1, it's a layer three device. It routes between networks, it routes between local area networks, it routes between virtual LANs. And what we do is from switch one, we take this fast ethernet 01 that's in VLAN 10. We run it up to a gigabit ethernet, ethernet interface here. It could be gigabit or fast ethernet, whatever you have, but it needs to be able to connect into your switch. We set that port up to be part of VLAN 10 also. We say this is the network address. It's all part of the same network. We take another connection. We run that up from the switch, and that's where our VLAN 12 is, and we say that's part of this network on the right here. We basically have two separate networks. In order for them to communicate, that's what the router does here. The router then routes. It, does, it performs a routing service. If we look at this, this is fine for two networks. Let's say we, we have more than two networks. Let's bring in a third PC. 
a third PC down here, PC3, VLAN 30, right? All of a sudden we have to have another connection going up to the switch. If we have PC4, we have to bring another connection up to the switch. For every VLAN you have, you have to have another connection up to the switch. These are all access ports ports these connections between the router and the switch those are access ports they only only pass one vlan worth of information there is no tagging on those frames that go across that connection because the switch already filtered it out here based upon what vlan they belong to and so the information going across here isn't tagged it's only for one vlan what we do with router on a stick is we combine all of these into a trunk port. If you like this episode on inter-VLAN routing operation and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in a video or podcast form. On this diagram, we still have our two VLANs. We have our couple of PCs, each one in a VLAN. But between the switches, between the switch and the router, we've created these trunk lines. So we have one line going between router one and switch one here. But VLAN 10, VLAN 20 go across it. We even have a third VLAN. We have VLAN 99 right up here. That's our management port for our switches. And so we actually have three VLANs going across this one connection. And that's what the router on a stick does is instead of having all these access ports connecting up to our layer three device, we have a trunk connection going up there that handles all the VLAN. When the switch puts that information on this VLAN, it then puts that 802.1 frame tag or 802.1 Q frame tag in the header. So that way we can identify what frame it belongs to. In this diagram, we have switch one and switch two. Notice between them, we have to have these trunks between the switches because in this diagram, we only have one PC in VLAN 10 or VLAN 20. But what if we have another PC over here and that is in VLAN 10? We even have the a third VLAN here with our management. So we have to be able to pass all that information between these switches, and that's what that trunk does. That's the idea of this concept of router on a stick. The idea is here you have your router, your layer three device up here on a single connection into your network. It doesn't have to connect to anything else. It could be just, you can kind of think of it as that's the end of the path. But what the router does is gets the information up there, looks at it, changes that 802.1Q tag, sends it back across the trunk, and then it can get delivered to wherever it's going at that point in time. And so this router looks like it's on a stick, like a lollipop, basically. And that's where the idea of router on a stick comes. It's that lollipop on that stick. The third option we have for inter-VLAN routing is using a layer three switch. A layer three switch is a special switch. Typically when we talk about switches, they're layer two switches, but what a layer three switch does is combine the functionality of a layer two switch with a layer three router. It puts them basically in one unit. And so we can have the best of both worlds. That layer three switch looks like a normal switch. It's got all the ports on the front, but inside the management, when you get in there and start working with the operating system, you not only have the layer two switch functionality, you have the layer three router functionality built into that. And so you only have one device to manage. If we look here, we can see that we basically have the same network setup. We have VLAN 10, we have VLAN 20, we have a PC into the into each VLAN, those are connected to the switches. And then these switches, we have a connection into our layer three switch. On the layer three switch, we create our switch virtual interfaces. On the layer two switch, remember we create a 
SVI, a switched virtual interface to allow us to connect to it and remotely management. We set up a VLAN, uh, the default management VLAN is VLAN 1. You, you should create a different one and then use that as your management VLAN. You go ahead, you put your IP address on that VLAN, you put a default gateway if you wanna reach it from other networks, and that'll allow you to connect into it, either using Telnet or SSH. Once again, don't use Telnet, very unsecure. But it allows you to connect in and remotely manage that device. Well, that SVI, we take that same concept here, we create an SVI for each VLAN here. That will allow that layer three switch router functionality to then route to these VLAN interfaces, these SVI interfaces to route the traffic between VLANs. It was my pleasure to bring you this wonderful episode on inter VLAN routing. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com, and you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I picked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. Once again, I'm Kevin. This here is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.